السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم um, Welcome for the first uh, lecture in a series of lectures that is organized by Physiotrio. Um, the aim of these uh, lectures is to provide some knowledge uh, about certain topics and different topics in different levels. Um, and it is my pleasure to start uh, the first uh, topic which is a very important, um, uh, which will answer, hopefully, a very important question about patient and patient outcomes. So let us ask ourselves this question. Uh, if a patient comes to you and you've been treating them one session after another, how do you know that your patient is actually benefiting or not? You have to ask yourself, okay, is, is my patient improving? improving? And one of the ways to, um, uh, to test that or evaluate that is using, by using outcome measures. And to, this is uh, uh, basically our topic today. Uh, what are the different outcome, what is outcome measurement? What uh, um, are the um, different criteria? And which uh, outcome measure is useful for which case? All these questions we will try to uh, hopefully uh, cover in this, uh, in this lecture. So um, this is prepared by myself uh, and uh, Samir al Gahtani, uh, physiotherapist uh, in uh, Physiotrio. So uh, today basically is part one and uh, Samira will be covering part two next week, inshallah. So before we start talking about outcome measures, let's go back a little bit uh, and, and let's, let's look at health in general. And uh, we need to define uh, health and uh, we remind ourselves that health is not merely the absence of a disease. It's a, a state of well-being, complete well-being, physical, social and mental. Uh, and in, in Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, we are now uh, going through uh, the um, uh, Vision 2030. And one of the programs, major programs in uh, the realization uh, of, uh, of this vision is uh, the new model of care that has been launched several years ago. And this model of care is a translation of the well-being and health. And this, the patient and the family is uh, the center of this model. Outcome measures is part of this framework. And it is very important to, uh, tool to uh, make sure that we are uh, achieving our goals from this new model. And uh, another question that we, uh, every uh, model or every, every um, health care system is, is uh, looking at is the cost. The cost versus the impact. The cost of health care is getting higher and higher. And it, it, it reaches up to 10% of uh, G, GDP in the uh, whole world globally. Uh, so, are we spending our money in the right direction? And outcome measurements is one of the tools to make sure that we are actually uh, getting value of our money. And how is this impacting the individual and, and populations in general? Uh, outcome measurements, measurements is not just uh, important for those aspects, but also when you talk about uh, uh, clinical practice guidelines, uh, clinical practice uh, uh, guidelines, uh, outcome measurement is um, an important and uh, crucial and fundamental tool that uh, uh, should be used in order to apply these uh, guidelines. Registries as well is um, uh, based uh, basically uh, gather information, including outcome measurements. So, uh, what kind of tools uh, that uh, we are talking about in, in regards to measuring health? Um, these tools could be uh, those uh, that can measure change over time. Um, these tools uh, they have to be meaningful uh, for that particular population or that particular condition. Uh, 
um, the, these tools should, prom uh, uh, should promote and facilitate collaboration between decision makers, whether they are the healthcare workers or the healthcare worker and the patient. Um, it's, it should be culturally sensitive, and uh, this is very important. What is suitable and appropriate in one population may not be uh, suitable and uh, appropriate for another population. So uh, when we select uh, these tools, we have to be considerate about the population and, the, uh, and that it is culturally applicable. Uh, now, uh, if we want to talk about the different types of, uh, of measures, the, these are the different uh, types. It could be dimension-specific, disease-specific, generic for general um, conditions, or individualized or uh, for specific rule, or utility-specific, um, especially in, uh, when we are evaluating economic uh, level. So all these are different types of measures, and the selection of the measure depends on the situation, depend, depends on the, on the aim of that, of that measure. But we need to consider these different types when we uh, select our tool. Uh, these are different uh, types uh, of tools and different uh, um, outcome measures, some of them translated into Arabic, some of them uh, are not. And these basically uh, are patient reported outcomes. So this, th this kind of outcome measures looks at the patient perspective. So um, there are other measures that are measured by uh, the therapists. Uh, or the uh, healthcare workers. For example, uh, if we take a simple example in, in physiotherapy, uh, range of motion using goniometer, this is an outcome measure, an objective outcome measure, uh, which is um, done by the therapist or the healthcare worker. However, if we want to look at the patient perspective, then we use patient reported outcomes and the selection of these reported out patient reported outcomes de uh, depends on um, what are we looking for what is our aim but these are examples and we will talk about them later in details um, so now we, we when we talk uh, before we go into details about how to select the outcome measures and what is the criteria what are the characteristics we need to um, think of what to do with the, with the data that is coming from the outcome measures um, so the, the the data usually is used in clinical research so um, if we want to apply an intervention and we want to look at the impact of that intervention uh, in research, then we need to select the best and the appropriate, the most appropriate outcome measure to uh, find out and to compare between the control group and the intervention group, which uh, group is uh, um, uh, the outcome, the impact of, of the intervention. Is it uh, actually um, doing what it's supposed to do? Another uh, purpose uh, or what, of the, the, what to do with the, with the data coming from these outcome measures is the economic analysis. If we want to look at the value of, of uh, healthcare and are we um, uh, reaching the, the goals or the aims or the, uh, the, the, the best outcomes uh, from our uh, care, uh, then um, outcome measures is the tool to um, uh, evaluate economically the interventions and the uh, the uh, health care that uh, we, are, we are providing. Um, also, uh, if is it, if this based practice is based based on outcome measurements, um, without the outcome, it, 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 we cannot. Uh, be practicing based on uh, evidence. So this is um, what, uh, uh, the, some of the data or the data. This is what we are gathering from this kind of uh, application. Uh, clinical applications um, for a patient uh, on your clinic on a daily basis, uh, session by after session, you want to see the impact and the progress of their condition 
um, the data that you, ga you gather from the outcome measures is uh, one way of looking at the um, the progress of, of uh, the patient. Um, another dimension that I would like to highlight uh, and the benefit of using outcome measures is to look at patient experience. And uh, it's not just the condition progression or the uh, improvement in uh, the, the function or pain. It's also about their experience, about their satisfaction. Uh, are, are they um, uh, going through the healthcare system in, in a, um, a smooth way or uh, how, how is uh, their ex how, how they are experiencing the um, um, going through uh, health care. Um, and if you can see here, this is uh, from this systematic review, you can see that it, uh, patient experience is positively, positively associated with self-rated and objectively measured health outcomes. So in order to understand their, their experience, outcome measure is the tool to, um, to use in order to measure their experience. And this, uh, this shows you um, the identifying aspect of patient experience, whether it was um, relational aspects or functional aspects. And outcome measure is the tool to use in order to look at the experience. This is a, a very good um, uh, a systematic review about this aspect. And when we talk about outcomes, we have to talk about the international classification of function and disability and health. Um, and this is a framework uh, that we can uh, use and apply uh, in order to cover the holistic uh, uh, dimensions uh, of uh, an individual and population. So if we, have a, if we are looking at one health condition or a disorder or a disease, uh, we need to evaluate the impact of this condition on an individual from five dimensions, five basic dimensions. Um, and if you remember when we talked about the, the, the definition of health, we said that uh, health is not merely the absence of a disease. It's, it's, it's uh, well-being, uh, in the three dimensions, social, mental, and physical. And this is basically a translation of these dimensions. So in that health condition, we need to uh, look at the impact of that condition on body function and structure. And this is uh, the uh, um, uh, impairment aspect of the disease or the condition. And we need to look at their activity limitations, and this is the function aspect. And we need to look at the restrictions and participation, and this is the social uh, aspect of the, of the uh, condition. And there are other dimensions that are contextual, where um, the, the uh, patient, where is he living, the environment that he's living in, is he living in a city, is he living in remotely, is uh, in a remote area. Um, uh, is he living in a, in a, um, uh, a house or an apartment? Um, does this uh, place has? Uh, does he have to go through uh, to go up the stairs, down the stairs? So the environmental factors are uh, considered, uh, and there's also uh, the personal factors: their age, their gender, um, uh, things related to uh, the, their environment uh, and how they. Um, uh, their psychological aspects, all these are their character, all these are uh, related to uh, personal factors. So this framework actually uh, gathers or put uh, uh, together all the uh, uh, domains that are relevant to that condition and that should be measured. Outcome measurements can be relevant to each one of these domains. For example, if you measure pain, it is related to body function. If you look at um, uh, walking speed, it's about activity. If you look at um, uh, health status in general, it is uh, um, or um, 
the, uh, uh, yeah, health status, for example, it's about their participation restriction. If you look at um, uh, where they're living, it's an environment factor. If you uh, uh, look at uh, their um, age or gender or, or their uh, psychological status, it is personal factor. So uh, outcome measure tackles or, or, uh, all these uh, aspects. Um, let's go uh, deeper into, into uh, this framework and why do we um, need to do, look into uh, outcome measurements from that uh, asp uh, or from that uh, framework. It, uh, this framework provides a common language and terms and concepts. So healthcare workers, they can understand each other and they use the same language. It also organized data in a, in a very structured way, and you will not miss uh, information relevant to that uh, patient. It will provide you a multi-purpose tool, so it can be used for economic uh, uh, testing or evaluation. It can be used for uh, pro uh, looking at the progression of the condition, um, looking at different, different aspects. Um, and also, uh, it is used, a framework used to look at uh, policies and uh, the, the patient rights um, and uh, is it uh, uh, covered or not. Um, uh, if we, when we, when we uh, discuss with uh, payers, uh, uh, these are uh, measures can be used uh, to uh, justify um, uh, the the payments, for example. So all these uh, um, are the benefits of uh, using the international uh, classification function and uh, disability and health framework. And um, uh, ICF uh, is uh, uh, developed by World Health uh, Assembly, or uh, it was uh, established by the health wor the World Health Assembly in two thousand and one. And since then, it has been developed and uh, so many uh, outcome measures actually uh, were based on this uh, framework. Um, the, the ICF has a, a, an advantage that it is co covering the biopsychosocial approach of care, which is the holistic uh, approach. So it is biopsychosocial, it is uh, culturally applicable, um, the ICF has been tested and uh, examined um, uh, in the literature, so we can say it is valid and reliable and sensitive to change. It is meaningful to the population and to the individual because of uh, this holistic uh, approach. And it is multidisciplinary, so m different disciplines can use the same uh, measure and it can be um, used across uh, different disciplines. Um, so let's dig deeper into this. And this is, these are some of the examples um, of uh, the areas that you tackle in each domain. Uh, as you can see here, body structure and, uh, and function, we look at um, the sensory function, pain, um, cardiopulmonary, etc. Activities, you look at the tasks, their activities of daily living, um, the participation, you look at their major area, like for example, uh, employment, etc. Uh, the, the social role. Um, in personal factors, you look at, uh, as you can see, age, gender, education level, etc. Environmental factors, you look at uh, support system, where they're living, uh, um, and other uh, areas, as you can see. This is, uh, if you want to know more about ICF, this is a very nice uh, educational tool. Uh, it's an e-learning tool. You can go to the, this website and it will go through uh, um, different uh, domains and gives you examples and you go through scenarios and at the end you will get a certificate. So it's a, it's a nice e-learning tool if you want to know more about, about ICF and it helps you understand ICF better. 
And this is one of the exercises that you go through during this, uh, this uh, e-learning tool. Now, uh, we, so we talked about outcome measures um, and uh, how important they are for the value, uh, for measuring value of health. Um, and how they are used in clinical practice guidelines and uh, they are included in registries uh, and they are very good tools to look at patient experience and we looked also at ICF and the framework and, diff and outcome measures for each uh, domain. Um, now, I, th I think we, need, we have to uh, talk about uh, uh, outcome measures and evidence-based uh, practice. And um, uh, if you remember, we said that outcome measure is, is a, a, a very important, uh, or the tools are very important to practice uh, um, based on evidence. So we need to understand evidence and uh, just briefly, uh, evidence-based practices, it's a bridge between uh, research, evidence and clinical practice and, and uh, patient, uh, uh, out, uh, patient preference. And um, uh, evidence-based medicine or healthcare or, or practice, it uses evidence in making decisions. And uh, these decisions basically uh, related to patient care. Uh, you, so it uses b current evidence for the delivery of, uh, of health service. And the evidence-based practice uh, um, is a, actually an, a product of uh, three major uh, domains. Um, looks at the research and evidence, but doesn't uh, ignore clinical experience or patient preference. So we need uh, to uh, integrate all these domains together. Um, the evidence is building up and uh, the evidence uh, is um, uh, getting the information from groups and uh, interventions that uh, are controlled. So sometimes it might not be applicable for that individual patient. So you have to have your clinical judgment in applying the evidence. Uh, um, so evidence-based practice is not just the evidence, but it's it also the context, the clinical experience, the clinical judgment, the patient preference as well. So we need to think of all these things. And uh, this just a reminder of the hierarchy of evidence. Um, this has to be in a completely uh, um, separate uh, topic and, and lecture to uh, go through different uh, aspects of uh, the hierarchy of evidence. But this shows you uh, that um, evidence is uh, not always strong. So we have different levels. Um, and we need to uh, look at um, uh, the uh, uh, clinical guidelines uh, and uh, make sure that these clinical guidelines are actually based on good and strong uh, evidence. So this is um, a good resource if you uh, can go and, and look at it and uh, uh, learn more about, about different levels of, uh, of evidence. Um, so why do we want to measure uh, patient reported outcomes? Why do we need to look at patient aspects or uh, uh, objective or subjective aspects? Um, it's, it's basically uh, because now we are looking at, uh, we are talking about value-based healthcare. And value-based value uh, healthcare, it's uh, shifting the interest and the focus from the practitioner to the patient. So it is patient-centered, value-based transactions um, where the patient's uh, outcomes is the, actually the, uh, the, the ultimate goal. Uh, we want to improve outcomes with uh, a high quality care with minimum uh, cost. And that is the value-based uh, healthcare. And this is uh, where the outcome measures are important, whether it was patient reported or uh, uh, otherwise. 
the process of selecting uh, different measures in clinics uh, or clinical practice, um, there are steps that we need to follow uh, to select the best outcome for the best condition and for the best situation. And uh, this depends on uh, three main questions. Why, when, and what? So when we ask the, the question why, why do we want to evaluate? What type of information to collect? What decision to be made? We need to ask this question. It will help us in our selection. The second question is when. When are we going to collect the data? Is it on discharge? Is it on a first encounter? Is it in the middle? When are we going to measure uh, the, this outcome? What kind of data are we going to select uh, or look for? Uh, what are the assessments that we are looking for? What specific measures that we are looking for? So uh, we need to ask all these questions. If we answer all these questions, then the, the next step is to select, implement, and then evaluate your selection. Is it appropriate? Is it not? And uh, what is the impact? So this, is, this process can be done uh, within a clinical practice, uh, within a department, uh, or, or maybe on an individual level. So the clinical uh, practitioner, they can ask these questions for a specific condition or a specific disease. But uh, it can be also done on, on a macro level, on the healthcare uh, system or on a department or in a hospital. Uh, so the, the same, pro the process is the same regardless of the level, micro level or macro level. So uh, when you uh, assign quality uh, of measure, uh, we, we have to, uh, when you, uh, sorry, assess uh, a quality uh, of measure. We have to ask, uh, this, this is the, the second layer. So we know now what are we, uh, which um, questions or we, which data that we want to gather. And we decided about uh, uh, the, the tools. Now let's assess the tool and, and see if this is the most appropriate tool, tool or not. So we need to look at that tool. Has it been published? Uh, is it, is it uh, standardized? Uh, does it have uh, clear scoring instructions? How do I know if the measure is any good? So um, these are the different questions that we need to ask when we select a certain tool to make sure that it is appropriate and it is, it is good quality tool. Let's go into details now about uh, the assessing the quality of a measure. So uh, the first thing that we look at is descriptive. So we selected a tool uh, based on our goal. And then uh, let's now evaluate that tool. So we need to ask ourselves, OK, what is the purpose? What does the instrument aim to measure? What is it measuring? Is it measuring impairment? Is it measuring function? Is it patient-centered or is it um, practitioner centered. What is it, uh, what, what was it designed to an evaluation or uh, an evaluative uh, outcome measure? Is it, is it used to evaluate the level, for example? And we need to know the background. Why was that particular measure needed? What was the rationale behind the design? Why was it designed? What, uh, what setting uh, uh, or application wa was it used? And description of that uh, measure. Uh, whose um, a perspective does it capture? Is it the patient or the uh, family or is it uh, the practitioner? Uh, what are the main domains covered in that, in that measure? How many times? and uh, uh, subscales are there. Um, and what is the response format? Is it, uh, is it um, 
uh, ordinal scale? Is it a yes, no kind uh, of scale? Is it a score? Um, so we need to ask all these questions. And uh, this gives you uh, a description of that quality measure. And does it answer the, the, the questions, the earlier questions of um, uh, when you selected that tool or not? The second set of uh, questions that you need to look at or the assessment uh, areas that you need to look at, you need to um, evaluate now the, um, the tool. Uh, is it user-centered? And what are the psychrometric properties? User-centeredness, uh, you want to make sure that this tool is uh, measures and captures the desired outcome and uh, it is um, uh, um, uh, the patient is the center of, of uh, this evaluation and uh, captures the, the views of the um, uh, of the patient so uh, if a patient comes to you for example with knee pain and they are diagnosed as having knee osteoarthritis. And you want to look at the impact of knee osteoarthritis on their health. So you will look at their range of motion, you will look at their walking speed, you will uh, look at their, um, uh, if there's deformity or not, uh, their, uh, uh, their balance, their proprioception, all these aspects. But you have to also look at um, uh, how is it impacting their uh, daily activities. You have to ask them that question. How is it impacting their role in the family? Are they uh, psychologically, is it impacting their psychological aspect? So for that purpose, maybe you need to use more than one tool or maybe one tool that captures all that. Uh, so, the, uh, all these um, uh, uh, elements will, um, uh, will, will impact which tool you, will go, you are going to use. The other dimension that is very important is the psychometrics, the psychometric properties. Is it valid? Is it reliable? Has it been standardized? Because you don't want to use a tool that is not valid. And um, or it's not uh, stable. Uh, um, so if, if you're using an unreliable tool, that means it will not capture uh, um, uh, accurately um, the, the outcomes of your uh, uh, intervention. So this is, this is very important when you select uh, an outcome measure. You have to look into these, uh, in the, to these aspects. And this is an example of, uh, or, or, the, or uh, ex a very brief explanation of psychometric properties, the reliability versus validity. So uh, if, for example, the first uh, picture, it shows you uh, a reliable but not valid tool. So it is actually uh, going in the same spot all, every time, but it is not at the right spot. The second, it's valid, because it's uh, um, going in, in the, all over the, uh, the domain, but it is not reliable because it, every time it goes to different uh, area. The uh, next one, it's neither reliable or, not, or, or valid. So it's actually all over the place. The best is the last uh, one on the right, where it... Um, is reliable and it is valid. It is actually in the center and every time it hits the center. We want a measure that is in, uh, in that area. It is reliable and valid. Another um, uh, psychometric property, if you want to look at change uh, in time, then the tool has to be responsive. It has to be sensitive to change. If it's not sensitive to change, then it is not the best tool to look at the progression of a, of a disease. 
Um, another uh, uh, area that uh, need to be reviewed for each uh, any quality measure is feasibility. Can I use it? Can I apply it in, in my clinical practice for that particular patient? The other one is utility. Is the measure acceptable? Is it, does it provide uh, extra information? Can the measure become an integral part of data collection of the, in that practice? So these are also uh, domains that are uh, important and needs to be looked at and evaluated. Let's look at some examples uh, of tools that are very commonly used in clinical practice. This is one of the most common tools. It's the visual analog scale. One uh, side is no pain, and then the one next side, the other side is the worst pain imaginable. And the patient they cross along this uh, ten millimeter uh, uh, line, and then you compare. Uh, every session uh, how they're doing compared to the initial their initial evaluation so this is very simple and uh, it is reliable it is valid for that particular and uh, uh, patient another example or these are different examples for the spine for example the uh, oswestry disability index the um, back belief questionnaire, start back, SF36, which is generic, and the uh, NDI, which is the neck disability index. So these are all different uh, outcome measures uh, that captures patient perspective. And, and, and the, uh, our assessment, the clinical assessment is um, uh, the clinical as, uh, or a clinically based evaluation is another outcome measure but uh, here it's all basically uh, capturing patients uh, outcomes um, another example is the um, uh, the fatigue se uh, severity scale uh, also it is uh, one of the scales very commonly used in uh, cases where fatigue is uh, one of the major aspects um, another another example that is used uh, for to capture the uh, psychological impact of the disease. Uh, it's also translated in Arabic. Uh, another uh, very good um, scale looking at lower extremity uh, function, um, and it can be used across different uh, conditions. Um, another example, which is, this, this is very individualized. If you remember when we talked about individual, individualized outcome measure, this is very individualized. So here, um, it's patient-centered, uh, patient-specific functional scale. You ask the patient at the beginning of the evaluation to um, select the most important goals and uh, from, from physiotherapy, for example. So they select, uh, they want to, to uh, walk um, for 15 minutes without pain. Uh, they uh, want uh, to uh, uh, sleep well uh, and uh, without disturbance. Um, th th so so let's, say, let's, uh, let's say that th they're walking is their ultimate goal. So uh, the first session, they will say, okay, from uh, a scale from zero to 10, um, give us your uh, assessment. How do you, uh, what degree is uh, the difficulty walking uh, for 15 minutes? And they say, well, it is five out of, uh, of 10 or seven out of 10 difficulty or pain, for example. And then you uh, apply the treatment, and then after three sessions or four sessions, you go back and ask them the same question. Okay, so when you started, you gave yourself uh, the difficulty seven out of 10 walking for 15 minutes. How is it now? So they uh, select the, 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 um, the goal or the uh, measure that uh, you will build up uh, in future very useful tool and I recommend it 
because it is very patient centered. Uh, another uh, example uh, for upper extremity. Uh, and here I, uh, I would recommend that you go there. I will show you two websites, very useful. Um, if you want to select an outcome measure, spe specifically patient reported outcomes. This is an Arabic health measures. It captures, it, it is established in Princess Noura Universi University and you go into their website and they have gathered um, and they, it is uh, getting updated all the time. So it gathers all the, um, most of the outcome measures that are translated and validated in Arabic. So it is very useful for Arabic setting. Um, here, um, uh, the uh, Ability Lab, they have a very nice website. They have tremendous uh, amount of outcome measures that are uh, used in different conditions. You just uh, type in search, put a keyword, which uh, um, condition you're looking for, and then they give you all a list of all uh, the recommended um, outcomes and then uh, they have the information um, and they give you a link to uh, the publication for that uh, particular outcome and then uh, you can look at their validity the usefulness you know, the feasibility and uh, they give you different uh, uh, population uh, where the um, outcome uh, has a uh, measure has been applied uh, and different settings so it, it, it is very helpful and useful to, uh, um, website that you can uh, look for uh, different uh, outcomes so now what's next we, we have general information about how to select the process of selecting outcome measures, how to select an outcome measure and what to look for and what uh, uh, to evaluate. Now, what's next? Uh, I think in part two, uh, we um, will have some examples and Samira will give you case scenarios and then um, will ask you some questions uh, about these scenarios and then uh, we, you will go through uh, the selection process for the, those cases. And I encourage you uh, to check the websites that I just um, mentioned and I encourage you also to uh, go through the ICF uh, e-learning tool. It will help you a lot in understanding um, the domains, different domains, and how can we measure different domains. And also, I encourage you to start applying outcome measures in your practice. Um, you can use uh, very simple tools like visual analog scale, and uh, you can practice it with your, uh, with your patients. I encourage you to do that as soon as possible. So, um, uh, by at the end, I hope you find uh, this um, brief introduction to outcome measurements useful. And I would be very much uh, happy to uh, answer any questions or uh, um, if you have any, uh, uh, you want us to cover more uh, topics about, uh, about uh, specific outcome measures, I would be more than happy to, to do so. Thanks uh, a lot for listening and I hope to see you soon and, and uh, stay safe. Thank you.